Dear brothers and sisters, we are about to begin the Easter Vigil. In five minutes' time, we are going to begin the preparation of the Paschal candle here in the atrium, and then we uh, go to the main church to do the exaltal, and from there we will proceed to the Easter Vigil celebration. So wherever you are, please uh, tune into our website and, uh, and our Facebook page and share with other people. Let us come to celebrate this most amazing, beautiful vigil, beautiful celebration of all the celebrations that we have. Let us together celebrate and prepare an atmosphere at your, at your home and, uh, and wherever you are, bring peace and uh, bring a quiet time and let us together uh, celebrate this wonderful, most uh, beautiful celebration. Thank you. Hopefully, no fire department will show up. Smoke? Problem? Okay. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, uh, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's passion and solemnity in this way, listen to, the, to his word and celebrate his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may so inflamed with the heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor. Through Christ our Lord, Amen.
the preparation of the candles. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all times belong to him. At all ages, to him glory and power through every age, forever and ever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. Can you see if it lights? For the people to see, show them. Now let us proceed into the church. be to
blessing power. May the Lord be on your lips and minds so that may, he may worthily proclaim the Paschal acclamation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's death to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shot through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night 
When Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Oh, wonder of your humble care for us. Oh, love, oh, charity beyond all telling. To ransom a slave, you gave away your son. Oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. Oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners. Oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. The one morning star who never sets. Christ your Son, who, coming back to death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now we are about to begin the reading as we have solemnly begun the Easter vigil. Listen carefully to the Word of God and let us meditate on the readings that we are about to hear. If you are following the um, missals, we are taking the Old Testament reading, the first reading, the third reading, and the fifth reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed, the second day. Then God said, 
Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin, so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kind of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day 
from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been crucified, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you, lift up, lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, 
that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them, the column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed, without the rival camps coming any closer all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at the dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its mist. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore, and behold the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham's inherited, uh, children of Abraham, and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you shall not run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, sole hope of the whole world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they professed to profane my holy name because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, before we are going to be, uh, sing this responsorial psalm, I ask you if you can find out a candle or even an electric candle that one we used to use for our Christmas uh, decoration that we used to put on our uh, window side. Please have it. By this time of this uh, responsorial psalm is sang, find one at a real candle or at least an ele electric candle and have it have them ready for with you. As we sing the um, Gloria, you should light them and hold it in your hand. And again, we will need them as we continue with the liturgy where we will do our baptismal promises. So mean this time, if you can find out uh, a candle or an electric candle, that will be a great thing to do. Thank you.
Let us pray. O God of unchanging power, the eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and sincerely accomplish the work of human salvation which you planned for all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had become all is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As we are going to sing the Gloria, please stand wherever you are. Please stand. Let us pray. 
O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that, renewed by, in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early, when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord.
Dear brothers and sisters, Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. If you remember when you could have been here all the other years, uh, I asked you to shout hallelujah, to shake the roof of the church uh, in joy of the Easter. You are not here, but I am very sure you are watching me in your home. Repeat after me. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Alleluia. Let us rejoice and be glad. For this is, the Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Let us radiate the great joy of Easter to wherever we are. Dear brothers and sisters, I don't know if you know, in these days, I have been going to the funeral homes and cemetery almost every day, wearing masks and gloves, to do, the, to do the burials of many of our beloved parishioners. This is a very, very sad time where the people don't even get a chance to say really goodbye to their beloved ones. Where the families don't have an opportunity to give a good tribute to their, uh, their grandparents, their parents, uh, who passed away from them. It's a sad time. But each and every family that I meet, uh, I tell them this, I repeat them this several times, and I ask them to keep in their heart this again and again, always. This is what I tell them. Dear brothers and sisters, Death is not the end. Death cannot stop us. Death cannot stop us from loving each other. The love that you have for your beloved departure person, your beloved grandparent, parent, grandmother, mother, is going to continue. It should continue. And the love of your beloved departed will continue too. For death is not the end for us who are Christians, who believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ has defeated the power of death, the power of Satan, the power of darkness, the power of sin, and he has risen from the dead, from the tomb. And that is what we celebrate today. So I wanted to repeat to you all, every one of you throughout the whole world, going through the pain of grief, uh, at this time because you had lost one of your beloved one. I wanted to assure you what Christ have assured us as he rose from the dead, that death is not the end. Death cannot stop us from loving each other again. For Christ has risen from the dead defeating the power of death, and he has opened the great heavenly gate for us. So, 
death is not the end for us. I have heard that there is an association for people who have been wounded by cancer. For those cancer survivors, there is an association. And that association has, a, uh, has its a symbol, an emblem. You know what is on their emblem? Their emblem, the, the symbol, is the phoenix bird, a bird of Egyptian mythology. The Greek poet Hesiod, who lived eight centuries before Jesus was born, wrote about this legendary bird in his poetry. When this bird, when this, the bird felt its death was near, that is about 500 to 1400 years, it would fly off to Phoenicia and build a nest with aromatic wood and encave itself into that nest and set it on fire. When the bird was consumed by the flames, a new phoenix bird sprang forth from the ashes. Thus, the phoenix symbolizes immortality, resurrection, and life after death. It sums up the Easter message perfectly for us. It sums up the Easter message completely for us. Jesus gave up himself, and from the grave he was raised to new life again on the third day. New life arises from the ashes of death. Today, we are celebrating Christ's victory over the grave, the, eternal, the gift of eternal life for all who believe in Jesus Christ. That is why the phoenix bird was one of the earliest symbols of the risen Christ. The phoenix bird also symbolizes our daily rising to new life. Every day, like this, like this phoenix bird, we rise from the ashes of sin, guilt, and are refreshed and renewed by our living God, living Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, with his forgiveness and the assurance that he still loves us and will continue to give us the strength and courage that we need in our everyday life. The Lord does not want us to live in a gloomy tomb of self-pity, hopeless defeat, or chronic sadness, but he wants us to raise, rise above the tombs of sadness, sin, and despair, as he was risen from the dead. Easter, the feast of the resurrection, gives us the joyful message that we are a people, a people of Easter, resurrection people. This means that we are not supposed to lie buried in the tomb of our sins, evil habits, and dangerous addictions. It gives us the good news that no tomb can hold us down anymore. Not the tomb of despair, discouragement, doubt, or death itself. Instead, we are expected to live a joyful and peaceful life uh, where, there, where we are expected experiencing the real presence of the risen Lord because the Lord Jesus Christ is risen from the tomb, not to distance our, himself from, from us, but to be with us to the end of the world. So he is risen from the dead, from the tomb, to be with us. We need to experience him every day. 
We are to be the transparent Christians. We are called to be transparent, showing others through our lives of love, mercy, compassion, and self-sacrificing service that the risen Lord lives in us, in our heart, in our lives. Easter reminds us that every Good Friday in our lives will have an Easter Sunday, that Jesus will let us share the power of his resurrection. Each time we display our love for others, we share in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Each time we face a betrayal of trust and with God's grace forgive the betrayer, we share in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Each time we fail in our attempt to win over a temptation, but keep on trying to overcome that temptation, we share in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Each time we continue to hope, even when our hope seems unanswered, we share in the power of uh, resurrection of Jesus Christ. In short, the message of Easter is that uh, nothing can destroy us. Nor pain, nor sin, nor rejection, nor betrayal, not even death, because Christ has conquered all these, and we too can conquer them if we put our trust and our faith in the risen Lord. I have seen a picture of two saints together, Saint Francis Xavier and Saint Ignatius of Loyola. In that picture, Saint Ignatius of Loyola sent Saint Francis for mission. Underneath the picture it is written, Ite Inflamate Omenia. Go and set the whole world on fire. Go and set the whole world on fire. We are Christians and we need to set the whole world on fire as we believe in the resurrection of Christ by living the risen Lord in our daily life by conquering our temptations, by conquering our sin, by overcoming every kind of evil influences that may come to us. So as we continue with this uh, Holy Eucharist on this great vigil of Easter, I wanted to remind you again that Easter gives us hope. Even in the situation that we are in, Easter gives us hope that God will bring us life and light again and again and again. There is only one thing that we need to do. We need to personally experience the risen Lord. That was the gospel that was preached by Mary Magdalene. A one word homily, a one sentence homily of the resurrection. Tomorrow we will read that gospel. And it will be said, Mary will say in that gospel, I have seen the Lord in the garden and he is risen. Our faith experience should never be a third party experience. Our faith experience of the risen Lord should be first hand, first, per first person experience. We should see the risen Lord in the garden we should see the risen Lord in the church. We should see the risen Lord and experience him in the Holy Eucharist. We should see the risen Lord personally in our daily life. We should see the risen Lord in our kitchen, in our dining table, in our workplace, in our work table. Then we will be able to set the whole world on fire, Ita inflamate omnia. Set the whole world on fire 
after experiencing the risen Lord. So as we continue, we have to ask for that as he has given us the great gift of eternal life and opened the gates of heaven for us. Let us try to live a life that is worthy of the resurrection and worthy of heaven, spreading the great news of resurrection of Jesus Christ through our daily life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now we are going to do the blessing of the baptismal water, the holy water. As we all know, this year we don't have any, any catechumens or candidates uh, to receive the sacrament of baptism and confirmation and accepting them to the church, but we are going to do the blessing of the holy water. So as I said, Make sure after I, we come back after the blessing of the holy water, hold the candle or the electric candle in your hand as we make the baptismal promises. So now we are going to bless the baptismal water. We are going to do the blessing of the ba uh, baptismal water. O oh God, who
who by the invisible power accomplished a wonderful effect to the sacramental signs, and in, who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moment of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take its, itself the power, power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtues. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shore through the Red Sea, so that chosen people set free from the slavery of Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized by, the, by, by John in the waters of Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side, along with blood. And after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive the Holy Spirit and the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacramental baptism from all stain of the life of all, and may be found worthy to rise to a life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. At this time, the Easter candle is uh, dipped into the water and lifted up three times. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who are, be, who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death, may rise again to life with Him, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we are also asked to say the prayer of uh, exorcism. And now let us put our, our hands over our heart and let us listen to this uh, prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, who sent your only begotten Son into the world to, to cast out the power of Satan, the spirit of evil, rescue the mankind from darkness and bring him into the splendor of your kingdom of light. We pray for all the whole world. Make uh, free us from sin and make us the temple of your glory and send your Holy Spirit to dwell within us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are going to do the baptism of promises. So I ask you all if you have... Uh, a candle or or even a electric candle if you can hold it high and uh, pronou pronounce the amen and i do as i ask you the baptismal promises do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of children of god i do do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. 
Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, and rose again from the dead, and is he now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? I do. Dear brothers and sisters, at this time, as we cannot be blessed, receive the blessing by the holy water, make a sign of the cross as I bless you by the sign of the cross. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we are going to continue the Holy Mass with the prayer of the faithful. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil authorities, as we face the common threat of a virus that may harm us, may they unite to lead us to work together for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For medical professionals, as they respond to an increase in the number of people in need of care, may they be guided by God's healing power as they rely upon their training and their experience. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, may they feel the healing touch of God and that they may return to good health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those working for a cure for this recent virus, may their minds and expertise be guided by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died from this recent virus, may their families find comfort in the Christian community May they share eternally in the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people of the world, may they seek God's protection and realize an end to the threat of this disease. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those gathered here today in this holy place, may we experience an increase in our desire to care for the weakest among us and to serve the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions that we hold in the silence of our own hearts, especially those in our book of intercessions. And we pray for all of those who have died with the sign of faith. At this Mass, we especially remember the intentions of our celebrant, Father Thomas. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Summing up all our prayers, let us ask our Blessed Mother to strengthen us to live uh, the baptismal promises that we took right now. 
and every day keep them close to our heart and reject Satan and accept God in our daily life. And let us together pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thee among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now we are going to begin uh, the, the, the liturgy of the Eucharist. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that has begun in the Paschal Mystery. May by the working of your power bring us the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been risen. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has restored our, destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people excels in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as without end as they acclaim. Blessed is he 
who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, this holy and unblemished sacrifice, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis O Pope, James O Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth handed on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember your servants at this time. Let us remember and pray for all those who have asked us to pray, all those who need our prayers, especially those who are suffering at this moment because of this uh, COVID-19 virus. and all who are participating, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night, of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, and your blessed apostles and holy martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, we, O oh Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that your whole family order our days in your peace, and command that we may be delivered from eternal domination and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may come, become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven, to his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new an eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, this holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon the offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, the, the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your angels to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through the participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember your servants. At this time, let us remember all those who are departed from us, especially at this time through this devastating sickness. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, who, your servants, who, do, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Saint Cecilia, Blessed Father Justin, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing on our merits, but granting us your pardon through Jesus Christ, through whom you continue to bless all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, and bestow them upon us. To him and with humanity, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and Now let us together pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always so free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us, let us offer to each other a sign of the peace of Christ. the receiving of your body and blood Lord Jesus Christ not bring us to judgment and condemnation but through your loving mercy be it for us protection in mind and body and a healing remedy behold the Lamb of God Behold Jesus Christ who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And the body and blood of Christ bring us to eternal life. Amen. The body of Christ.
As you can all receive Jesus truly present in the Blessed Sacrament now, let us do an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for God's blessing. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, that he may defend you, within you, that he may sustain you, before you, that he may lead you, behind you, that he may protect you, above you, that he may bless you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Dear brothers and sisters, have a wonderful night. Tomorrow we will have our, at 11, p, 11 a.m. our uh, Easter Mass, and also uh, soon after the Mass we will have the Divine Mercy Chaplet. You know, previously I said I think I said it would be at 3 p.m., but instead of that we will have soon after the 11 a.m. Mass we will have the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Again, I ask you all to continue to pray and spread the good news of hope, faith, and love. And soon after the uh, recessional hymn, we will begin the Divine Mercy Chaplet. If, or if any of you can continue watching and pray, please continue to do so. Thank you. God bless you all.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fountain of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world, and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Apostle Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He is ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 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 for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 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 for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, 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 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, 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 for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, 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 for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair, nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. O Jesus, eternal God, I thank you for your countless graces and blessings, let every bit of my heart be a new hymn of thanksgiving to you, O God. Let every drop of my blood circulate for you, Lord. My soul is one hymn in adoration of your mercy. I love you, God, for yourself alone. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you.